If you're tired of a uh, really weird coordinates, this video is for you. Make sure to watch it until the end to learn how the Revit coordinates works and how we can understand it better. So Java is here and let's start with the points that we have in Revit. We have three different types of coordinates points in Revit and they are internal origin, uh, project base point, and we have also survey point. And each of them uh, serves a different purpose and we are going to explore all of the parts in this area. Now we are in the Revit and I've opened three views in here, 3D view, site, plan and also a floor plan that we have in here. In floor plan, you don't see any, let me put it on hidden line, you don't see any kind of points that show you that it's a, I don't know, server point, project base point or internal origin. But if you want to see them in floor plans, you have to go to the VG. But if you don't want to turn them on in the floor plans, you can go to the site view and you can see the points in here. Let me put it on maybe a wireframe and you can see the points in here. Right now, we just can see the, let me select one of them. We just have the survey point and we have the project base point. And if you want to see the internal origin too, you have to go to the VG and under site category, we have all of the points in here and I want to turn on the internal origin too. The first point that we want to talk about is internal origin. I can bring these two here and we have the internal origin. Then this one, you can't change it and you can't even select it. You can just say it for the reference purposes. And this is the same uh, zero point in X and Y and Z for all of the autodesk softwares like AutoCAD, we have UCS and in Revit we have internal origin and it is the same place in all of the Autodesk software. So that's the internal origin. It's at the center of your project and you can change it. So if you want to uh, reference between your Revit and your uh, CAD files, you can start with this point. If you don't have any coordinates and work with it and the uh, CAD file and Revit file will be at the same place. We will talk about that later. I just turned off the internal origin to see the other points better. As I said, we have project base point and survey base point. Usually the purpose of each one is different and the best workflow that I can suggest is to use a survey point as a reference of your site. For example, at the edge of the street or the place that your surveyor suggests or a place that is common in uh, three or four buildings. For example, you have a big project and you have different buildings in that project and you can use survey point as a base point for all of them. For example, one point in the site, let's say for example in this part and we have three buildings in here and we can have that survey point as that point. And also for the project base point, it is better to serve that as a point for each project or for each Revit file that you are going to use. For example, usually in our company, we use it as a uh, intersection between a grid and one grid to have a good understanding where is our project base point. And uh, let's see how we can move them and how it affects on our project. Right now, I have selected the project base point, press tab, select the project area point. Now, when I change its place, you can see the coordination and the height doesn't change and it's the best case for survey point. For example, let's say that you want you have a point in your side. Let me try to do the line in here. And this is going to be the common point in different projects or for that project or a site reference for that project. And you want to bring your survey point in here. Make sure to don't clip it. When you clip it and you change it, change the survey point, it will change the coordinates. We want always the server point to be the zero point because we want to have the coordinates of other points let's say for example this part according to the server point and on zero zero uh, but when you change the server point from here to here in unclipped uh, mode then again this part will be the zero zero for server point but right now when you don't uh, unclip it and you just move it like here to here, you will have the right coordinate from here to here. We will talk about the spot coordinates and spot elevations later. And then, as I said, for the project base point, you can use it as a point that you have in your project. Let's say that we have this 
grids in here. Let me put the scale on something bigger. Now let's talk about the project base point and I brought and I turn on the internal origin to understand it better. And now you can see when I want to move it, we don't have any on clip mode because it is reference and it's coordination reference to the server point. If we put this in zero and this one on zero two, you can see they will be, it will be on server point zero zero coordinate. But let's say, as I said, we want to place our project base point usually on intersection of our project, we can use it later for importing CAD files or those kind of things. But mainly we use server point and internal origin. Uh, personally, we use uh, I use that, but you can use project base point too because server point is more reliable. But it is good to put the project base point in the right place. And I think intersection between one of your grids is a good place to put it there. And now we have all of the points in different places and let's talk about the a few tips that we can implement. The next point that I want to tell you is about the height of it. For example, let's go to one of the elevation or we can go to the 3D2. I think it's better and in 3D to see it, you have to turn on the points again in the sidebar. Let me turn them on. We have them in different places. But the height, of, the height for each of them are zero right now. But sometimes we want to have an elevation related to a point that we want to have. For example, we want the, uh, this point of us, for example, the site reference, has an elevation for it. For example, something, x or y or anything. And you want to, uh, you want to see sometimes your height of the points, for example, this corner, in reference to that point, for example, we want this part to be executed in the side 10 millimeter upper than this point. To control that, when you select the server point, you can definitely move it and bring it down. You can, uh, in here, you can bring it, let's say it is a uh, minus five meter. I bring it uh, five meter down. And now we have our zero zero server point in here. We can go to one of the sections in here, or this elevation is good. Let me select on it. Right now, if I select one of the levels and go to the edit type, in this part, we have an elevation base, and it is project base point, and it is zero, and it's good for most of the project. But right now, let's say in this specific view, let's create a new type, and let's change the elevation uh, base to save a point, and click on OK. And now you can see, uh, we can see the height of our levels according to the uh, server point instead of project base point. Sometimes useful in planning and in design. So that's the part for height that you can change the elevation base for levels uh, easily from here. And the next part that we want to talk about is about extracting coordinations. But before that, make sure to like this video and share it with your friends and colleagues. And if you want to get access to all of our exercise files, you can go to our Patreon page. You can find the link in the description. To see the coordinates for each point with different references, let's go to the site plan. And now we can use spot coordinates. Let's go to the annotate tab. And in here, let's use spot coordinate. And in here, again, we can go to the edit type later. But let me just come in here. You can see uh, it is uh, something. <laughs> yeah and uh, 11,000 or something, and that's for it. But let's go to the edit type of this one, and let's see uh, which is the coordination coordination base. So right now, you can see our coordination base is server point. Let's create a duplicate, and let's call it for project base point. And now let me create another one from this, create it similar, or CS, and let's place another one in here. Let's select it and change it. Yeah, for PB, we have to change it to project base point and click on OK. And for this one, let's change it to the previous one. Now you can see, we can see uh, the coordinate according to the project base point, uh, which is this one, or server point, which is this one. And also in here, we can see it according to the internal origin too. Let me create another one. Now you can see I have the point according to the internal origin two, which is uh, in here. Uh, 
uh, it depends on the project, but personally, I don't use the internal learning one, but we use project-based point coordinates and survey point coordinates regularly in our project. The next thing that I want to talk about and is really important for referencing your project or geolocation in your project is true north. Sometimes when you start a project, the server gives you a difference between your project north and true north and how we can see it in Revit. In Revit, you just see everything in a project north. But if you want to see or if you want to provide site plans with true north, you have to adjust it and you have to enter it in Revit. What is the best way to do it? Usually I see the other people go just uh, to the project base point and in here change the tool north angle to something like let's go and put 20 and we can't see it because in here we have to go to the properties and in the orientation we have to change the project north to true north. Now you can see we have 20 degree difference between project north and true north. It's good, it doesn't have any problem, but usually I think if we do this in this way that I will explain to you, it will be more understandable for you. Let's say that we have this point in here and our server gives us 20 degree for true north, but we have to ask him or ask her which uh, part, the uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise. Let's say we have our north in this part, our true north in here. And usually I place this line for myself and I will understand it better. And now I go to the manage tab and in here we have our coordination and our position. We have to put our orientation on true north and do it again. But before that, let me go to the project base point and make the true north to zero. Let's go to the position again and rotate true north and put the place on here on your zero point and then you can rotate it like this and I think in that way you will have the better understanding of rotating your project and you can add some symbols for true north too but that's the way that we can have it. In any view, for example, let's go to the floor plan, you can change your orientation easily but right now because I'm using a scope box I can't do it but if you delete your scope boxes you can do it but it's easily adjustable and you can use it to have your site plan in that way too. In the next two steps we are going to talk about CAD workflow and Revit workflow and learn how to work with those files. Let's start with the CAD workflow. Let's say that we want to uh, have a cat file in our project and to see how it behaves. Let's go to the AutoCAD web and I've created this file, this uh, simple rectangle on the U, uh, 00 uh, UCS and let's bring it in Revit and see how it works. Let's go to the insert part and in here let's go to the link cat and let's select the uh, DWH file that we want to bring. And in here you can see we have positioning that which is the important option right now for us and we have a center to center origin to internal origin and shared coordinates when we use origin to internal origin uh, and click on open you can see uh, we will have a base as i said our uh, ucs and internal origin are always the same in different projects but let's see if we get a different result when we bring it by another option. And let's put it on center to center, click on OK. And now you can see it's uh, extracting the CAD data and it will convert the center of that geometry and we'll place it in here. So that's another way. But usually we use internal origin to internal origin as a point that we want to bring. If you have lots of CAD data, you can use shared side. That we, will, we can talk about it in future videos make sure to comment that below if you want me to create another video for shared site and now let's go and export our file and let's see the different result that we have for exporting dwgs let's go to the export part but before exporting we can go to the options and in here let's go to the units and coordinates and we have two parts in here we have internal origin and we have shared coordinates when we go to the internal origin, let's export one with internal origin and we will export another one with shared coordinates. 
Then I export this one with DWG. Yeah, that's the one that I want here. I've exported uh, the file that we've created in two different ways. The, uh, the number one, which is in the left side, is our internal origin to internal origin. And the right one is our shared coordinates that will transfer the true north and those parts too. So that's the difference between these two. And now let's talk about the Revit workflow. The workflow that we talked about in here was saying for the architectural part. Let's say that you are in an architectural frame and you bring your coordinates and server points in the right place and you work in this way. But let's say uh, what we can do if you are in the MEV part or if you are in the structural part and you have the architectural file and you want to bring it and make sure that you have the right coordinate. Now I just created a new project and blank project and I want to bring our architectural file and let's assume that I am a MEP engineer or a structural engineer and want to work on that file. You can go to the insert part and let's go to the link Revit this time and let's select the architectural file that we created together. In the positioning part, you have different options and I don't want to make sure you're tired with all of the explanations for each one but you have internal origin to origin, shared coordinates and those parts. But right now I don't uh, work with them and I just want to tell, show you how to uh, bring it in the right way. Right now I just bring it by internal origin to internal origin and click on open. And right now we have our file. Let me, let me make it half tone to, to see which one is the link file and which one is our own file. Let's go to the side and see the point in here. And it would be better, I have to do the half tone again. And now you can see the point in our architectural file and also in our, you have two options. You can just move your points to the where that the architectural points that are, or you can do another thing that is better. And right now let's go to the manage part. In the coordination part, we have an option which is acquire coordination and it will acquire the coordination from architectural file. You just need to click on acquire coordination and select the link file. Now we have our survey point on the survey point of our architectural file. So it will match your survey point to survey point of the architecture. But you can choose the project based one according to your needs, so it doesn't uh, need to be on the same place. But in projects, it is better to be on the same place. You can do it for the other buildings in your project too. As I said, you can use this uh, site, uh, server point as a reference for different pro uh, for different buildings or different parts in a project. So that's the way, and you can use acquire in that part too. And then you can just bring this part to here to have all of your points on top of each other and they are matched with the architecture. And if you want to learn more about DWG and PDF export, you can watch this video that I put in here.